<coughs> okay guys, uh, I am Mayank Baragi, uh, Senior Software Consultant in Nardis Software. So in uh, uh, my previous presentation, I talked about Docker, but uh, unfortunately at that time I was not able to demonstrate uh, demonstrate the practical example of uh, Docker. So here uh, we will uh, we will go through the basics of Docker very quickly. And since uh, I I already covered it in last uh, presentation, uh, but our main focus is on uh, uh, some practical learning. Uh, so as so initially there was uh, uh, client server uh, uh, client server era where components were uh, where software deployment was not very hard and uh, when uh, uh, complexity increased so uh, so hardware infrastructure uh, uh, become more complex uh, so as the softwares so now we can see that softwares are modulars they follow uh, micro uh, service architecture so there are a lot of component to deploy. Uh, so as uh, servers, so uh, uh, unlike uh, unlike uh, the uh, the previous decades, uh, now uh, large softwares and companies are rely on small uh, cluster of small uh, uh, machines. So uh, usually uh, in their data center, they are a, a group of uh, a group of small virtual machines, which uh, uh, so. So, uh, so uh, huge applications are deployed on uh, uh, these uh, clusters, which uh, uh, which which are uh, which made from small machines. <coughs> so this is this, so that's why so uh, container comes into picture. Uh, so this is this was the challenge, and uh, this challenge also in. Uh, I had relayed this challenge with uh, uh, a very known problem with the uh, uh, cargo transport example. So they have goods to transport and uh, they have vehicles on which goods uh, to be transported. So we can relate these goods uh, with the software. So we can relate these with uh, maybe MySQL, Scala uh, and uh, different kind of uh, AMQ queues and uh, we can relate uh, uh, these kind of infrastructure with uh, my laptop, or my friend's laptop, with uh, 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 servers, cluster, in-house cluster, uh, VPC. So, so in order to solve the problem, they uh, came up with the idea of container. So, a software industry. So, here uh, now, what uh, uh, software uh, manufacturer or uh, developer did do? They just uh, create their software. They package their software inside cluster, uh, inside a container, and uh, they deliver this container to uh, DevOps, and uh, and then operations team. Then what operations team do? They uh, start, they deploy these software on different kind of machines, and uh, all the configuration uh, are in their control. They uh, if uh, software uh, if uh, uh, needs come that uh, uh, soft. Uh, uh, software needs uh, uh, scalability. If uh, uh, heavy load comes, then uh, uh, they increase the uh, increase the number of uh, uh, number of containers uh, for uh, belong to particular uh, application. So uh, so that is what they do. So here uh, they they is uh, <coughs> separation of concern. So people who are developing software. So, for example, when we uh, when we develop software, what uh, sometimes uh, that happens? Okay, uh, there are multiple applications are running on the same so, uh, same machine. Okay, and uh, okay, your application is running on port 9000. Then I should uh, uh, I should uh, configure different port. Otherwise, conflict would happen. So, this kind of things would not happen if we are using uh, uh, containers. Uh, so each uh, so each application can be developed into in isolation. It is not required that uh, that particular application have a prior knowledge to of another application. <coughs> so here I gave the example of uh, uh, Google as well. So Google run more than uh, two uh, two billion container per week. Then we compared. Uh, uh, there are some difference between uh, virtual machine and uh, container. Virtual machines are uh, uh, very heavy, and containers are not. Uh, and uh, uh, 
uh, they, uh, and uh, on the other hand, uh, virtual machines are still seems to be more secure than container. Uh, since if a container, uh, it had, it, so containers run as a root privilege. So if any container is compromised, then uh, security, uh, uh, they would be a security threat. So then people come with a, a different kind of orchestration tool which manages that security uh, concern as well. But uh, uh, bare cl container are not are not very much secure because they are done as a root. Um, uh, so I have a question. So inside, uh, so while running our applications, uh, while containers, we can configure its uh, some uh, like configuration, for example, port or host. If we are using a server application, but uh, uh, usually those things. Uh, are done inside the application itself. Okay. So uh, in that case, like, uh, should we keep it inside the application or should we do it via Docker? Uh, in any case, I will prefer Docker because applications, so suppose uh, you have multiple applications to deploy right. and you have a single server and uh, applications come with, uh, uh, so applications share something common. So their kernel, their OS is common uh, and uh, suppose uh, one application misbehave and it is taking too much memory, there is a memory leak. So not only that application would be crashed, but somehow other application would be crashed as well. And uh, suppose they, in your machine there are two applications, uh, one is talking to uh, a staging database and another is talking to a uh, production database or local database. So you need to know every time and uh, if you are, uh, uh, and best way of, do, of doing is, uh, is uh, via environment variable. And uh, so, environment variable is shared across all the applications. So these kind, these kind of problems uh, would be there if we do not use a container. Uh, and uh, and what we uh, do with container? So containers are like a, a, a isolated Linux box. So what we can do? We can allocate specific memory and CPU to them. So suppose your there is a memory leakage or CPU overhead in one container, then it would never affect another container. And uh, another advantage is that, uh, so containers, uh, so uh, we uh, we talk about Java that uh, come, uh, build, build once and then run anywhere. So this is, this kind of things uh, is, uh, uh, so what in a con what we can do, we can build a container in our local box and work and once it is running on your local machine, then it is definite it would be running on your uh, uh, staging environment, production environment, whether it, be, it would be a, a, a Ubuntu uh, or a, a CentOS or maybe Windows or uh, Make OS as well. So it would be running everywhere. So you are sure if the application is running on your uh, local machine, then it would be running on your uh, servers as well. And this kind of confident we, we can't have uh, uh, that much confident about our applications if our, we are not using containers. So we spend a lot of time in our local, okay, uh, my application is running well on my local, but okay, in server, it is, uh, uh, there is some problem. Maybe it is because of different OS, maybe it is because of uh, uh, dif uh, different uh, CPU and uh, memory allocation. So this kind, uh, kind of problem can be rectified if we use uh, containers. So, is that answer your question? <coughs> so, uh, so containers are not a new con concept, uh, but uh, Docker revolutionized this idea. Uh, so, so when Docker uh, came into picture, then uh, uh, after that, uh, a lot of companies start investigating, uh, investing into uh, containers. So uh, I have given the example of Google, even uh, Microsoft, uh, Amazon. All of uh, the companies, all of companies are supporting Docker. Okay. Uh, so uh, here you can see that uh, Oracle support uh, uh, Docker's. They have the uh, on infrastructure service uh, uh, and uh, so as uh, Amazon, Google, 
uh, Microsoft and uh, all, all the uh, big companies support Docker. Okay, uh, so now uh, it is time to do uh, some practical stuff. Uh, so, uh, how Docker is different than uh, AMI? That is Amazon instance, like machine, machine. Uh, machine. So, <laughs> AMI, uh, so AMI is itself is a virtual machine. Right. So it is a it is a stack. Uh, so if AMI is running, it's man, it's mean uh, there is a Linux box which is running. Uh, but uh, Docker is different. Docker, you can't. Uh, so Docker is a container, and uh, in a single machine, you can run multiple containers. So, uh, so here you are. Uh, uh, so, so uh, maybe uh, so idea is somehow related. <laughs> Since in AMI we can install our required software, we can uh, do some configuration and create an AMI. So that uh, second time when we need to start our application, we do not need not do not need to start all uh, uh, install all the services. Uh, so this part is covered in uh, Docker as well. Other than that, Docker uh, uh, Docker is uh, uh, a little more complicated and uh, uh, useful as well. Since uh, in a single machine we can run multiple container and. Uh, 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 we can provide a different configuration to different container. Uh, so these kind of things can be done using Docker. And, uh, I think uh, AMI is like the most user experience. Basically, you can replicate that image. So it is a uh, you can uh, it is a uh, customized Linux version. So you have uh, uh, one AMI. Uh, uh, so so there was a, a Linux kernel. Over it, people develop different kind of uh, Linux. So few developers, uh, Red Hat, uh, uh, Ubuntu, CentOS, and different. And uh, uh, so Amazon use uh, its own Amazon e EMI. So in that EMI, it, uh, uh, what Amazon did, Amazon installed few of their uh, software. Like uh, if you are uh, you start your instance using the Amazon EMI, you do not need to install uh, AWS client or these kind of tools. And they provide a do uh, 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 Docker pre installed as well. So so. So they uh, configured that Linux. So, so, so AMI and uh, Docker are uh, uh, we can't compare uh, these these two things. Uh, we we can uh, compare uh, containers with uh, VMs, but uh, AMI is a little too far. Okay. Uh, so in this do uh, demo, I'll uh, uh, install Docker. And uh, try to do a uh, few inter interesting uh, things uh, using Docker. Uh, so, just a minute. <coughs> so, for that demo, I, I demo, I have provisioned a Linux machine on uh, uh, this is on uh, AWS. Uh, so, from there, I'll uh, do my demo. So, Shift control plus Z. Okay. Now is it visible? Yes. Actually, uh, in this uh, machine, uh, Docker is already installed. So, what we do, uh, we do some interesting thing. We we will uh, we will go into a Docker container, which would be empty, and from there we will install all the software. <coughs> so, if I do Docker, so is Docker backward compatible? This is the previous version of containers that we have created. Uh, Docker's uh, uh, Docker is a uh, um, yeah actually uh, Docker is nothing. Doc Docker is just a script, script. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, suppose you have a Docker script for Cassandra, and uh, in uh, that script is wrote for Cassandra version 2.2.0, and then a new version comes. Then you just need to change that version. So for that, they would be a different. Image. So 
So there are a few Docker containers are running here. So uh, since we need to start from scratch, so I am going to delete this container. So this command will, will uh, run Docker, uh, will pull uh, Ubuntu from uh, remote local location since uh, if it is not uh, present in local. So it is uh, somehow similar to Git. <coughs> and then we run this uh, uh, batch inside uh, this container. Okay, uh, so please uh, forget about what we did till now. So from here we will start from scratch. So this is a empty box. Nothing is here. Uh, uh, my, my last command. What will happen? Yeah, we will discuss it later. So actually, this is the starting of uh, our demo. Uh, the starting point. So this is an empty box, and uh, from here we will do everything from scratch. How would we get into the room? Yeah, I'll I'll let you. Oh, yeah. So, Okay, uh, so this is an empty box. Now, first thing I need to do, I'm, uh, so I am not able to install Docker directly. I need to do a get update. can copy few comments. Okay. Now, right, uh, uh, using this simple command, we can install Docker. So, oh, that is not there. Either. So, it, this is a bare minimum uh, system uh, with only a kernel and few essential software. So, we need to install kernel as well. Cloud, it would make not take too much time, uh, so that's why I set up for that machine. Start. 
it is all it is already logged in as a root, so sudo is not required. Uh, 
taking my vote. Okay, if I uh, Yes, so we uh, need images to write the content. Yes, so we need the file system, but we have solution for it. Uh, so when we start uh, this container, we can pass a flag which uh, allow him to uh, uh, write uh, in uh, uh, main volume. So for that, I need to pass a flag. Okay, now I can start the uh, docker here. Uh, initially, uh, we create one image from Docker. Yeah. Then uh, we, op we open that container and install curl, install curl, or some other uh, other other other, uh, other application and as well as Docker also. In in Docker container, we install again Docker. Container. Yeah. So actually, it is not required. So actually I did it just to give my demo that how we can install docker from scratch. Okay. So, so just imagine this is a bare minimum Linux instance where nothing was installed. And we, we start from step by step. We install curl, then we install docker. Okay. Uh, so, so this is, uh, so now. Uh, uh, th that, 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 was, uh, that, was, that, that, that was just for a demo purpose. Yeah. How to install docker. So how so suppose uh, you do not need to install docker here, you can install your own software there. So there are two ways of doing this. One is through, uh, you can do it uh, uh, manually, then you just need to commit a different, uh, a different image. And then you can push this image. Uh, and second thing is that you can write a docker file. So in do that docker file, you can just start from, okay, I need to start uh, from uh, Ubuntu 16.4. Then I need to install Java, and then I need to do this. So everything would be scripted, and uh, just once you, uh, your uh, so your containers would be start uh, through this uh, uh, Docker file. Uh, that means that Ubuntu 16.04 is pre-scripted in Docker. Uh, here it is not pre-scripted. Here we pass it through our command. So uh, if you remember when we start our first Docker container, we just pass Docker run. And then give Ubuntu, Ubuntu 16.4. Yeah, 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 yeah. So what? Uh, so it is uh, very much similar. Uh, you can compare it with uh, Git as well as SBT. So when uh, when uh, uh, our build system, uh, what uh, uh, when we trigger any uh, command on our build system, what it do? If firstly it look into local cache. Okay, uh, if library available on local, then it pull that library from there. Otherwise, it uh, it pull that library from some. Uh, remote artisan. This so means this, uh, this is the same thing which is uh, uh, done by Docker. So uh, so when first we told Docker to uh, run Ubuntu, it find it, it tried to find it locally, but uh, it was unable to. Uh, it, it was not there. Then it pulled it from uh, Docker Hub. So it is a uh, 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 GitHub for Docker. This means uh, that Ubuntu 16.04 is pre-built like a dependency already uh, created by docker we just uh, use that dependency and create the image for uh, and create the container as like a ubuntu 16.0 yes okay okay so, so, um, so like as we install ubuntu 16.0 then curl so basically we are installing curl 
inside the world is 60.04 or just containers. So these are two individual software which are running on single container. So yeah, uh, yeah, these are uh, so your container. So container need to start from somewhere. Mm -hmm. So here we see as uh, so we said that okay, start a container uh, with a base Ubuntu image. Okay, uh, you can start container from uh, CentOS as well. You can uh, so these these images are uh, uh, large in size, so they are few lightweight images as well. So uh, if you uh, start uh, with Ubuntu Jesse, so uh, it is a very lightweight image, uh, 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 only uh, 40 uh, MB in size. So you can start. Uh, so actually, you need to start from uh, some Linux kernel. Over that, you can install your software. So, uh, so that's basically, yeah, it has installed on Ubuntu 6.0. Yeah. It is installed on Ubuntu 16.04. Uh, so base is Ubuntu, uh, the kernel of 16.04. It uh, do not uh, come with uh, all the commands. Uh, it do not have uh, 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 curl, ping, or uh, all the things which we use in Ubuntu. Yeah. Yeah. So that's the reason why it is installed on Ubuntu 16.04. Yeah. Okay. 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 Yeah. Now what uh, uh, we can do? So uh, these containers are fragile, and uh, uh, anyone try to uh, do some foolish things uh, on their Linux machine. So if I look into it, uh, so they are different uh, folders. Uh, so anyone try to delete any one of any any of these folders? Ever? No. But we have privilege to do that. We can do this. So. Okay, let me read uh, all the commands are there. Okay, and uh, now I do a few commands like uh, cat. Alice uh, will do better. There is no command over there. Okay, I broke I broke this this machine. Okay, and. Uh, I can uh, I can be at anything I want. So if something uh, 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 we we do something accidentally, there is no problem in containers. So okay, I just need to what I need to do. I just need to exit. Okay, I just need to remove this container. Okay, I need to remove this container. I need Okay, I do. Uh, just, uh, I can start from here. Sir. Okay, again, uh, my bin is on place, and everything is working. Suppose we want to delete uh, this uh, bin, but not other thing. Then yeah, you can delete uh, every, uh, anything. Actually, uh, idea is that uh, uh, if something bad happened in site container. Suppose you wrote a program and it delete uh, your file system or any crucial file. So what would happen? Your system would be crashed, and uh, on this this system, they would uh, there is a chance that uh, multi, uh, multiple softwares would be running. So you need to set up everything again, and uh, so this is overhead and uh, 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 great threat to any business as well. So if you are using container, you do not need to. Uh, so container uh, can uh, pollute itself only. Uh, it it would not uh, pollute outside anything. Suppose we want other things in this container, but uh, accidentally bin is de uh, gets deleted. But we also want other uh, what we done in this yeah. container. We need it then. Yes. Yeah, so uh, uh, you have you all uh, you already everything is there now. So now uh, but bin is there. If we delete the container, then all all the things get deleted. Now. Which we done in this container? No, no. So uh, you, uh, what you did, you you just exit this container and you start another container. Then so all actually, the work done in those containers gets deleted. Yeah. So containers are uh, uh, so so containers are uh, just uh, applications. Uh, so these these are the process Linux process. And uh, if your Linux process is uh, uh, polluted and doing something bad. Then what you do? Uh, you would just uh, you will kill that, uh, this uh, uh, and restart that again. Okay, so this is the same thing we are doing. 
your application is running now. So basically, unless and until you commit, right, uh, you can still get the old image. Basically. Yeah, old image, and after, uh, so I when I commit, uh, so in my, uh, the example which I gave, uh, here I start with Ubuntu 16.0, then I uh, did some changes and commit uh, it in my Ubuntu image. And if I start my Ubuntu image, I start container from my Ubuntu image. Then I do not, I, I would have a, a curl and a docker in place. And uh, otherwise, if I start with the base Ubuntu 16.4 image, then I do not, uh, everything would not be. You know, actually, just, just to the point, right? So basically, if something has gone wrong, right? Maybe you, you did a lot of installations, right? And then one installation was basically messing up your system, yes. right? So, so basically, when you when you restart the container, right? Uh, so, so all the things that we have installed, right? As you have done it right now, right? Yeah. Will be lost. That is correct, right? Yeah. Okay. So basically, uh, but uh, so so taking back your example, right? So for example, I delete. I wanted to delete PMP from my uh, container and want you to intentionally do it, okay. right? So I can do it, and then once I commit it, then it will be deleted, right? So yeah. basically, prior to commit, right, everything will be restored. But if I have committed something wrong, then it will not be restored, right? Yeah, it would be. But uh, yeah, and uh, suppose you have committed uh, something wrong, then only uh, then also you can go to a previous commit. Previous commit. Right? Yeah. So every uh, image is a commit. Yes. And uh, if we uh, push that forty, and if we push that forty commit with the same tag. Then it can never be done. Uh, commit, yeah. So, yeah. So tag, uh, yeah. So we will come to a tag later. Uh, but yeah, if uh, tag is same when we push these image to the uh, remote repo uh, with the same tag, then uh, uh, previous image would be uh, okay. would be overnight. <coughs> and so, what does this minus ID say? Uh, which one? It's like Docker minus ID. Okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, so. Uh, we can run any container. Uh, there's two type, uh, uh, two type, uh, uh, two type of running any container. We can running run these containers a daemon image. So just like uh, you you run a service start. Uh, so it is a uh, it is start daemons uh, and no hope uh, uh, using no hope command. But uh, when we start uh, run uh, uh, some SBT command, then it, these are interactive command. You can see their logs. Yeah, so, so you see that uh, foreground and background process. Right? Yeah, so foreground and background process. So it run. Uh, so if uh, instead of if uh, we run uh, 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 hyphen d instead of hyphen it, then it would run as a daemon process. And by default, it would be. Yeah, there's nothing by default. Uh, by default, you can you need to render it uh, through it or through d. So minus it or minus d. Minus d. Yeah, but uh, we can we can try it. I didn't try it often without any option. Uh, so I think it might be run as a daemon process, but let's see. Yeah, you are right. Uh, it it run as a daemon process. So when I look uh, when I do Docker ps, uh, no, it is it is neither run as a daemon process. So image is uh, so process is not run. <coughs> Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. Process is running, but uh, it is a, uh, in that process uh, we are not doing anything. Uh, so uh, if instead, uh, so okay. Uh, let it's me. It's not a continuous process. Yeah. Structure. It is not a continuous process. You are right. Could be seen from okay. Uh, minus okay. We we can do uh, something like that. Instead of that, we run this. Okay, so here I am running a uh, uh, base Ubuntu uh, image. Ubuntu. If I will not give any version, then by default it will take the latest version. And I am telling that okay, uh, start with Ubuntu 0.16.04 uh, uh, and start uh, 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 bin as such. 
uh, so that is the process. Uh, and uh, here I pass uh, that okay while true do echo hello world and uh, there is a sleep of one second. So now it would work as a server uh, which uh, which will echo hello world. Okay, now I can uh, see that uh, uh, Docker process, uh, Docker container. Okay, so Docker container is in place. And if I, uh, okay, so this is the one thing. Okay, now uh, uh, my sec uh, second thing is that, uh, uh, okay, uh, we are trying to relate uh, Docker with the Git. So we have Git diff, we have a, a Git, uh, a Git commit, uh, like, uh, so the, uh, this uh, phenomena has been followed in Docker as well. So in uh, Docker we can uh, get the history of uh, any image as well. So suppose you have you have started with a base Ubuntu page, then you install software A, B, and C. So you can take a history like uh, in GitHub we can uh, uh, we have a Git log. Uh, so so it uh, it log all the commit IDs. So so that Docker has as well. So you can track uh, history of any Docker container. Sir, uh, the last one uh, means that if Docker is running on daemon process as a daemon process, yeah. and that and that that container doesn't handle, doesn't start, doesn't work on any process. Then it means there is no process show by Docker. No, no, no. no. Docker have these uh, things as well. Uh, we will come come uh, come to that point later. not containers. So these are uh, two different things. So images are, uh, so containers are runtime instance of images. So, Docker, image, images. So here I, I can get a history of uh, my own image. Suppose okay now uh, my uh, our, uh, next demo is uh, uh, we need to move this uh, uh, my one to image on uh, uh, some remote repo. So so for that there is uh, gave this example just for a demo purpose so it, it is a easy to understand uh, otherwise all the commands uh, so in my image uh, i need to start with something like from uh, then to 16.4 then i need to install install uh, uh, a curl then install docker and everything just one time for another one yeah so there is just one time for another one yeah there is only one file for uh, all the commands right Okay, so this is uh, so I created an account in uh, Docker Hub. So and uh, so it is a uh, free repository like Git. Uh, everyone can create an account. Okay. Uh, so first thing, uh, what we need to do, we need to uh, create a repo here. So I'm going to create a repo. Uh, so repo is. Uh, I created it with the same name, 
For that, I need to provide some tag uh, uh, to my Ubuntu. Uh, so, git Docker tag. Ubuntu has latest tag already. So, by default, it took a uh, latest. If you do not provide any tag, uh, it came up with the latest. So, what is the purpose of tag? So, tag is just for versioning. Versioning. Yes. Yeah. <coughs> Git tag and uh, then we need to push this image. Uh, before pushing this image, uh, we need to log in as well. Okay, log in. So here I need to pass my username and password. Okay, thanks to Sai for that. Actually, I forgot to log in and I was trying to push my image. Then he came, okay, you didn't log in and how you can, you can push your image. <laughs> it understand docker hub but we can change that uh, as well so so when i do give my username so when i type uh, only my username my value then it by default it search into docker and if uh, i need to uh, suppose my uh, uh, images are on different repo uh, uh, for example ecr then i need to pass uh, some prefix over there that uh, my uh, AWS ID dot ECR dot something slash then my employee. Are there any other like services like apart from Docker? Uh, yeah, I'm telling, uh, telling the same thing now. No, uh, CR is specific Yeah, yeah. So EC, ECR have, has uh, the uh, 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 registry where we can uh, push our images. So Docker Hub is a uh, private uh, public cloud. So here we are in our project. We are using ECR. Uh, no, I was talking like just in Git. We have in Git. In Git, we can specify multiple uh, remote addresses for one repo repository. So can we do that for one image? Mm -hmm. Like have multiple remote addresses in only for one image? Yeah, we can. We can. So we just need to tag that image. Then uh, uh, so this is single image. We we. Tag this image multiple times. We just need to tag image and push image. So I I I tag it for uh, Git uh, Docker Hub and I'll push. Then it would be pushed to Docker Hub. Then again I'll tag it to ECR um, AWS ECR and then again I'll push. So same way would be pushed to ECR. That would create a copy of it. That would just create a new tag for it. Yeah. Uh, like if my images of one. So it it would be a new. Uh, on uh, on uh, since they would be a two different uh, reg uh, registry, so these would not uh, these would be a two different images. So in that case, it creates multiple copies for that. 
yeah, so uh, yeah, these would be multiple copies. But in case it doesn't create multiple copies, it just adds reference to that. Yeah, here, uh, here it will definitely create a new copy. <coughs> and uh, I, I'm not sure that it did only create reference. Suppose you are pushing your uh, your repo to uh, Heroku and uh, GitHub, uh, then these are two different uh, uh, repository. So references would not work, would they? No, so we just need to add another remote address to it. That's it. The code will not get copied. Yeah. So here, here we are doing the same thing now. Here we are. Uh, uh, so my my question was that the will image get gets copied on my local as well. On the on the separate remote addresses, it will be copied. Right. The same code will got two different. Uh, uh, okay. 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 Now I got it. Okay. So suppose uh, you uh, you have same image on two different registries. And uh, you push your image from uh, suppose Docker, right. and uh, second time you push your same image from ECR. In that time, you would not uh, image uh, uh, Docker would find that image uh, from its local, so it would not uh, uh, get uh, data from ECR. So, uh, so just like it did, uh, app only uh, and uh, only diff would be copied. Uh, so, if uh, suppose uh, uh, there is a, so that is a different example. Uh, if uh, uh, you have a, uh, uh, so in suppose uh, I have a Ubuntu 16 on my local box, and uh, someone have Ubuntu 16 on their local box, then they need to push uh, my image, my Ubuntu. Then entire image would not be pushed. Only diff would be pushed. So whatever we can see. Uh, using this diff command okay this is the image that's why uh, so we need to run this as first Okay, uh, so diff between my Ubuntu and uh, uh, Ubuntu uh, 16, only that would be pulled from somewhere. So idea is uh, taken from uh, uh, Git. Okay, so somehow I am not able to push that image, uh, so but I will not take too much time over here. Uh, okay, uh, so so this is the one thing uh, we can do uh, using Docker. And uh, now uh, your question was uh, how we uh, if uh, uh, process uh, yeah, the container is running as a daemon process, how we make sure that it is running? Okay, so that will co uh, we will cover that in monitoring part. But before going to monitoring, uh, let's uh, discuss some logging uh, that uh, how it work in Dockerized system. Uh, so. I have a question. How container size can be defined? How container container size depends on your base image and whatever layer you install. So in uh, uh, your project, uh, in uh, 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 one of our project, uh, we have a, a huge size of ima image because image magic and open CV uh, uh, have, has has to be installed, and the software size is too large. So that image size might reach to a GBs, but in uh, uh, in our case, uh, our most of the components are not too much heavy, uh, so it took uh, 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 500 MB or so. So uh, okay, before going into logging as as well, uh, just uh, uh, how Docker work initially, how it create its network, uh, so we can uh, see that part as well. So for that. Uh, if I look at uh, the IF config, so what Docker did, uh, Docker just create a, a link uh, at a, <coughs> a gateway. So here is a different uh, gateway, Docker 0, so and uh, uh, you can access it through uh, this address. Uh, so it is, uh, so by default it is 127.0.0.1 and uh, if we connect to LAN, there would be a different address. So 
so this is a this is a gateway for docker or every docker container and uh, if some container is running here so here this, this is the container which is running on that host so if we look into that container so if we look into vi it is in host so vi is not there we need to create a cat so you can see that it uh, so docker provides uh, a id to each container so it provide that uh, so gateway is 172.17.0.1 but here it provides uh, uh, some incremental id to each container and uh, to uh, these uh, uh, ips they can talk to each other <coughs> Okay. Uh, now uh, next part is uh, uh, Docker logging. Uh, so here uh, we can. Uh, Docker PS. And uh, our the. Uh, so this is our uh, continuous process. Uh, so which we uh, for which we can view uh, our logs. just need to pass the container id here and uh, we can uh, uh, view logs this is our demo process log yeah this is our demo process log and uh, and there is one more advantage of containers yes. so they are uh, uh, suppose we need to have some log monitoring tools uh, so for that we need to install various things but uh, uh, out of the box uh, uh, there are some uh, uh, third party providers which uh, create some containers and provide us and uh, we can do uh, we just need to run this container so uh, for example uh, uh, we need to uh, send our local logs to some remote system so for that what we did we just uh, install a container so just a moment uh, let me do it again So I'm going to uh, remove these containers. a container uh, called logs pod so we just uh, so before doing anything we just need to run that container and uh, uh, so what this container would do uh, this container would uh, 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 continuously listen listen to every docker container so when uh, uh, and the uh, uh, system logs of every docker container and uh, when uh, Every any container generate any log, either it would be a application log or system log. It would be uh, it would be listened by that container. And uh, here, uh, when we run this container, uh, you can see that Docker run. Then we provide a name of uh, container log scout, and uh, then uh, uh, we provide we stand for the uh, volume. So we uh, we map, we do some volume mapping, uh, and okay, uh, so. So here we created uh, that uh, container. So basically, we have to run this prior to running the container. Right? Yeah. So this is our container. Yes. So if we, if if a container is already running, then it will not. Work. No, uh, then it would not work. We need that's to. Why, we that's need why to you build those containers. Yeah. Uh, actually, I didn't type the entire command, so I need to delete it again. So. In that in that container, we need to pass the provider where ultimately where these logs will be sent. So that part is missing. So we can send it directly to S3 as well. Yeah, we can send it uh, to S3 as well. We can send it to uh, any log management system. So this is what you did for the paper trail app. Yeah. So here I created a demo paper trail app, and uh, I'm sending these logs to. Okay. So now. Uh, now I need to start a container. So I start the same container which uh, we started earlier. Uh, and will they 
very uh, okay, let me copy that from here. Okay. And uh, how these uh, so how these containers would be connected? So one thing was missing. So that is a this this is a link uh, link flag. So here when we start container, uh, we say that okay let's start a container from uh, Ubuntu 16.4 and uh, link it with logstock. And uh, there is already a container is running named logstock. And uh, we can also pass a name as well. So if you look into uh, above uh, here, you can see that uh, uh, instead if uh, you do not want to deal with uh, uh, container ID, you can just give it a name. Uh, sir, the container linking is only used for some logs purpose or some no, other purpose? No. Uh, container linking is for, uh, okay, uh, so in some cases, uh, so you generally container work in isolation. But sometimes you need to interact interaction between between container. Uh, so for example, you uh, you have a, a container for uh, MySQL, and then you have a container for your uh, services. Then you have a container for uh, your uh, web web uh, front end. Then these containers need to be linked with each other. Okay, this means that. So, I, uh, so your web container must have inform must have information of. Uh, your uh, 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 service container and MySQL container. In, in microservices, uh, every microservice is running on independent containers. Yes, independent containers. But they they are uh, they are also required for linking with each other because some uh, some service called to another service for some some requirement. Yeah, so yeah, sometimes they require linking. And if you are relying only on uh, uh, public uh, only REST interface, then that linking is not necessary as well. So if uh, if there is a, a domain name for uh, your address, uh, uh, your MySQL, MySQL is running on RDS. If we have a uh, RPC, yeah. So yeah, then then, then yeah. If we if we need to uh, connect uh, our local network, then we need it. Otherwise. There is a way to identify your service. So somehow your service would be discovered. So one uh, uh, one thing how you can uh, discover your service. Uh, so suppose uh, so uh, you can discover it uh, using uh, uh, any URL. So suppose uh, any domain name. Uh, so if it is public, then you can. Uh, if it is uh, hosted, then you can uh, do it using uh, uh, domain name. Otherwise, you need to link this container. So this is a Docker native approach, but they are few orchestration tool which provide a better way to uh, link to this container, a better way to uh, discover services. So okay, uh, I am going to start uh, that uh, our uh, eco server once more. Okay. Now I am doing Docker PS. Okay, now uh, my service is running with uh, this container ID. Just let me copy it. And uh, if I go to that uh, paper trial, I can I can see these logs on paper trial, but. Uh, Okay, uh, I am not able to connect it from this machine, but I, I can show it from there. So actually, uh, I do not have direct access to that paper trail account. But idea is that uh, these logs are uh, captured from this uh, log spot container and sent to paper trail. Okay. Uh, so 
so this is what how we can uh, so this example is not for uh, log management the idea is that uh, people can uh, uh, come up with a different kind of uh, container and which uh, and uh, these are uh, uh, we, we do not need to do anything to run this container so these uh, so these are uh, these are ready made containers uh, so like uh, for log is we do not need to do anything we, we just need to start a container and it is start with a bit job so, so I have a question. Please start a Java application inside a container, a machine. And uh, that machine contains like 4 gigabytes of JVM of RAM. Uh, we give that application 4 gigabytes. And I want to start another container with the same application again. Since they are running on different uh, containers, will that affect the performance? Will it be, will it be able to run? 8 gigabytes of or start uh, to JVM of 4 gigabytes on single machine? Yeah, it will, it will. Actually, uh, if we look into it, okay, so it is somehow related to uh, next uh, thing which I need to show. Uh, so that is the Docker container monitoring. So if you look into here, uh, so Docker PS, so there are two container, containers are running. And if I do Docker states. So you can see that okay, these two containers are running, and uh, uh, these are uh, so how much CPU is utilized, how much memory is being utilized, so everything is there. And uh, if you look, if you uh, type a uh, top command, so these containers are nothing but uh, process. Process. No, if we are running applications inside those containers, those are taking too much memory. That is really able to run it. Uh, you, 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 you. So, you have a machine having 4 gigabytes of RAM. Mm -hmm. And uh, inside my two containers, I am running the same application with 4 gigabytes of JVM. I want to run it. With the 4 gigabytes of JVM? Uh, so, will it run both of them? Or uh, will it say that, okay, you don't have enough resources to run? Yeah, definitely. Uh, could not run uh, both of them. So you can if so if you provide uh, memory, if you bound your container with limit your container with uh, uh, resource. So if you provide okay, uh, so uh, similar to uh, SBD or Java process, we can provide okay. We start with one GB of RAM, and with, uh, your maximum limit is two GB, two gigabytes. And okay, and okay, uh, and if you start your uh, both of and uh, suppose uh, uh, in your case. Uh, suppose uh, uh, you say that okay, start with two, two gigabytes of RAM and uh, go and go until four gigabytes. Okay, up to both, uh, four gigabytes. In your case, uh, both of the uh, ideally both of the container would be start, but uh, they start with uh, uh, two gigabytes uh, of RAM. But uh, uh, after that, then one of the container need to be compromised since uh, your system. Uh, capacity is not uh, too much. So for that, what we can do, we can you can specify uh, minimum me minimum memory requirement. So if you start your container with uh, uh, let's say uh, three gigabytes of minimum memory, then your first container would be start. But for your second container, since minimum requirement is not there, not available, then it would not be started. Okay. Uh, what if we do it on the other machine, like we can uh, run it, uh, one in this machine, one container in this machine, and another in that yeah, machine. So, so resources, resources of this machine is with this machine, and resources of this that machine is with uh, so so they would not be confused. So, but uh, uh, this question is to how uh, how the how resource would be shared. So, uh, so if you look into it, log spout. This is a process. These are on, uh, only a process. So, uh, so that's why containers are very lightweighted, uh, unlike uh, uh, unlike VMs. Uh, so these are simply Linux process, and you can monitor them uh, through different uh, 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 Docker command line client provide different way to monitor these things. So if you need to monitor a particular container, so you can monitor it Docker top.
that uh, what is the ID and uh, uh, what is the process inside the running. You can monitor these things. Sir, uh, I need to perform one thing. Do we run an image or a, or a container? I mean, yeah, we run images, but the runtime instance of any image is a container. Yes. Okay. And so this, uh, with this one, one container gives us only one host for, uh, like, for identifying. For example, uh, for example, if I am running one container, okay. and it's uh, ID is like host is like uh, one seven two or some. Can we have like one container with two hosts, <laughs> or one 